Thanks for tuning in to my little video today, which I'm going to concentrate on three things in regard to these neat IOTA Alpha speakers I have. First off, I'm asking the question, what is a 2.5 way speaker? How can we most easily understand what it is? Secondly, we'll look at sound quality of these speakers. And thirdly, Obviously, in a three-way speaker, you've got a high-frequency unit, a mid-unit, and a bass unit, like the ATC SEM40 Actives that I looked at. Between the tweeter and the mid-unit, and the mid-unit and the bass driver, you've got to cut off the frequency so the full ambit of frequencies from your amplifiers don't go, or amplifier, don't go to all the drivers at once. This is obviously the so-called process of crossing over and the purpose of a crossover in the speakers. In a 2.5 way speaker, we still have three drivers and often the mid driver and the bass driver are the same. The tweeter might not be restricted in how high it goes or the bass driver restricted in how low it goes, but it's the bit between the mid range driver and the bass driver that we're interested in. The mid-range driver of these NEATs has no high-pass filter. That's the filter that sets the lowest frequencies to the driver. So, in other words, the mid-driver shares some of the frequencies with the bass driver. So that's why we call it 2.5, because it's not quite a three-way design where each driver has separate demarcated frequencies. For the technically minded, in this speaker, this is at 4 kilohertz. The crossover between the mid driver and the bass driver is at 80 hertz. These speakers use a 134 millimeter paper cone bass driver that's angled right down against the floor, which unsurprisingly is why you get this notice in the box. On the angled side of the cabinet, you've got the 100 millimeter mid range unit which is angled upwards because you've got to disperse sound into the room. And the reason these speakers only stand 49 centimeters tall on their spikes. speakers use planar magnetic high frequency drivers which creates really fast and transient treble. They're similar to ribbon tweeters. There are slight changes in the way the diaphragm is designed and other elements in the, in the driver. They're also a rear ported design so the base air fires against the wall hence you've got to have good positioning to the wall not to create too much bass bloat and the bass driver occupies the lower section of the cabinet which is partitioned internally. You've also got a single set of speaker terminals on the rear of the case. Speakers of old, we all used to have by wire cables but nobody uses by wire speaker cables anymore. The only disadvantage perhaps of not having that extra set is if you want to buy amp the speakers. But is it really a disadvantage on these NEATs considering everyone now is so used to just single sets and with such powerful amplifiers? I don't think so. The manual does say that you should keep them at least 20 centimeters from the rear wall, obviously tow them in as well. I think 20 centimetres is probably a little too small. You need a, a slightly bigger gap to the wall. I found around 30 or 40 centimetres is fine. Just a little bit tighter dynamically with bass and perhaps unsurprisingly.
soundstage with these speakers is, to put it bluntly, stratospheric. Now I'm not bigging these up just for the sake of it. I picked these speakers. They didn't pick me, if that makes sense. I knew, already knew how good they were. And it's the most obvious trait of these speakers. Don't also just get them out of the box like I did and just set them up willy-nilly. Have a think about whether you want the tweeters on the inside or the outside, because if you do put them on the outside, you do get bigger soundstage than you do on the inside. And considering these speakers have really, really massive soundstage anyway, you might as well get the best out of them. The other main quality is the fact that you get that integration like you do with freeway design, with the way you get the elements of the music, the, the layers of the music come together. So expect to hear all the new details in CDs that you might not have heard because they're that good. I should actually say that in these areas I did find them slightly better than my PMCs 2523s which are around three times, two and a half times ironically the price. So considering that you're spending £1,385 for that price the performance is, is amazing. One downside is that they're not quite as good as some other designs in base fatness. You know, you've got to consider they've got tiny drivers and you know, that's a, that's a design consideration. What you're buying these for is that sound stage, you're buying them for dynamics, you're buying them for detail, and you're buying them for quality of sound. Some speakers like the Demand D11s from Definitive Technology have that taller uh, sound stage and you know the depth perception in the speakers as well. So these these neats do go relatively loud, but you do have to push them a bit if you want to get them to go really loud and really fill the room. Again, that's not a disadvantage, I don't think, because if you're buying these types of speakers anyway, you're probably going to be listening at moderate to low volume levels anyway. So to reiterate, it's more about getting the most out of the speakers in detailed dynamics mid-range rather than, I don't know, fire frenzy and bottom end bass thump of a different speaker. The impression that I got is that if you could put a unit of value in each centimeter cubed of space of these speakers, you'd surely think that they'd probably be one of the highest ranking types of speakers you could buy. Now, obviously I'm not saying they are because I'd have to test loads and loads of different pairs of speakers, but what I'm saying is you get a lot for their size. You may want these speakers to go a bit louder and a bit fuller, but that's not their point. Their point is good quality audio at room levels. And I think this is something that we can get a lot more of in, in audio, in audio file hi-fi. It's not just about trying to achieve concert level bass. It's about how it gets close to the music in these other areas like dynamics and detail, which are so, so important to the quality of audio that we listen to. I tried these speakers with three amplifiers or three systems. First off, I tried a Marantz PM7000N, which is a streaming integrated amplifier, power around 60 watts. Then I tried my 7,000 pounds-ish Cyrus Audio signature system with pre and power amps, mono blocks. And then I tried a 2,200 pounds Hegel H120 streaming integrated amp. Now I did actually find the Marantz was pretty good at driving these speakers, but because of the proximity of bass drivers to the floor and the rear ported de design, I felt that you probably need a slightly more dynamic and powerful amplifier to keep that bass driver under control and just make the sound a little bit tighter. The Marantz was better at driving different speakers and incidentally on the rear firing driver, 
neat say that these speakers work equally well with carpeted floors or hard floors in all my tests I should say that I use a carpeted floor well I didn't use a carpeted floor the carpets were already there didn't weren't they but there were carpets there <laughs> um, so I can't comment on how these speakers work with hard floors unsurprisingly the Cyrus system wouldn't be advocated normally because it's a price mismatch to these speakers it did show what you can get out of them and that they keep on improving with better amplification at the moment i haven't quite made my mind up on the hegel not to say that it's a bad amplifier it's just that it hasn't been run in yet it is extremely good but I, it hasn't been run in so i can't offer a definitive view but what i'll be doing is doing appraisal of that amplifier and please watch back later because i hope to try it in that review with these speakers still where i can offer some extra comments thanks very much for watching please let me know what you think of what i'm doing i always welcome constructive comments and i answer all comments as well so please put your comments in the comment section under this video also hit subscribe i'll carry on doing this let's carry on talking about audio let's carry on with the 13th note <laughs>